Hi, Paul Slatkiskin is broadcast speaking to Dr. Joan C. King. Hi, doctor. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Okay, Cellular Wisdom for Women, an inner work book, okay? Inner yep. work meaning that uh, we work with the book and we find a little bit more about ourselves? A lot more about ourselves because okay. we explore domains that ordinarily we don't explore. And those aren't website domains. These they are, are not website <laughs> domains. Those are inner domains. <laughs> because you have the word cellular, and that's sort of a, a techie term of sorts. Of course. And uh, domains are uh, another one of those things. But they we're going to talk about, uh, see, we're all related to the uh, uh, technology as well here. So you have chapters in here. Like, first of all, you start off, you know, like with a small concept like, uh, who am I? Right. <laughs> That's because we often live from old concepts we have of ourselves or expectations and concepts that other people have of us without revisiting those or without looking to see if they need to be broadened or deepened or in some way altered. Uh, this, this is, uh, are we talking about Tufts University uh, kinds of things here? No, those are things, these things happened after I left Tufts. What Tufts gave me was 20-something 20, 20 years of research and administration in the medical school environment that then was the data that I spent time thinking about after I left. And oh. that's when I began the concepts of cellular wisdom and the cellular wisdom book series. Okay. So now, let's talk about uh, cellular wisdom. And uh, I had a conversation last night with with somebody, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I'm, I'm turning 60 in, in June, June 9th. Mm -hmm. And I've been playing the piano for 50-plus years. Mm -hmm. And so I've decided, and I, I've probably been my worst own enemy in the sense saying, nah, I'm not that good. You know, when you start to listen to, you know, uh, Horowitz or you listen to, uh, you know, jazz musicians that are just right. all over the thing, right? Right. But I can play for four or five hours straight. I mean, and people Fabulous. love what I can play. Now, I can't say it's in my, well, see, here's the problem. I It, it's rock and roll, uh -huh. which is quite simple, but some people, I guess, so I've belittled myself in, to a certain degree. Uh -huh. and But I've now decided, and Sid Bernstein's agreed to present me, who brought the Beatles to America, Great. on June 9th, and I'm going to do a concert. Fabulous. Okay? So I'm going to get over my uh, not-so-good kind of feeling about myself. Now, uh, but I don't know, I'm turning 60, so that helped me say, well, I think <laughs> not now, people, when. Yeah, I think a lot of people at a certain point in life, I know when I was department chair and center director and it looked like I was the most successful thing in the world, it felt very empty to me. And I thought, is this all there is? Uh-huh, okay. And that's what set me on the uh, search for a deeper meaning. And I began to think about how cells receive the life force every millisecond, millisecond by millisecond. And I had studied them, watching them alive and synchronous and act active, and realized that if that life flow just was interrupted for a millisecond, we would cease to exist. Now, that's pretty powerful stuff, and we don't take time to think about it because ordinarily life flows. Mm -hmm. But within that life force is this energy that has ancient wisdom, the wisdom of how cells came to be, how they evolved, how they became then multicellular organisms, how cells learned, how to cooperate, how to interact, and how to work together. I mean, if we were just bones, we'd be a pile of bones on the floor. Uh -huh, just okay. Also, we couldn't move. So I think that when we start to look within, and let's take the example of you playing this concert, okay? Mm-hmm. You have a unique set of experiences. You have a unique perspective. You have unique talents. All of this is as unique as your DNA. And we know DNA is unique because it's enough to kill us. It's enough for us to identify someone and put them to death. So it really is unique. So what you bring, nobody else can bring. And you can compare it all you want, but comparisons are not going to give you the value of what you bring. There's a certain group of people that will be really attracted to what you do. And frankly, if you don't do it, there'll be a hole in the world because nobody else is going to do what you can do. Well, thank you. But, you know, I'm, uh, in essence, 
you know, I'm like one of those guys. I've interviewed, uh, you know, 25, 5,000 shows. I've interviewed all people kind of a little bit saying something like, uh, you know, you 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 have the right <laughs> to go out there and do that. But then to actually get out of it and get to do it, there still seems has, has seemed to be some kind of hesitancy. So I would ask you the question I often ask my coaching clients. Have you suffered enough yet? Are you ready to give it up? <laughs> <laughs> it is a choice. You can choose a new story. You don't have to live that old story anymore. Okay, so so the first part of it all, who am I, uh-huh. is to know to a certain degree who I am. And so say I do at some point figure that out, all right? I have figured it out that I am this person, but that has, say, in this case, some talent in the world of music. Right. And uh, now do I want to, uh, uh, as you say, get through it? <laughs> well, if you imagine yourself doing it and doing it well, okay, how does that feel? Well, it would be great, but where it happens if I don't do it so well? I don't want the but yet. I want to know, first of all, (laughs) how do you feel when you do it well? I'll feel great. Okay. I'll feel super. I'll have enter. I think where it, where it helps me is that I will have. I know it's important that I will be happy and I will have enjoyed myself, right? But I will have entertained all my friends. Exactly. So why don't you focus on the positive outcome? <laughs> because I can tell you, if you focus on the positive outcome, what happens is you start to see things you could do that you wouldn't see if you didn't focus on the positive outcome. When you focus on what might go wrong, you start to trip yourself up. And that happens psychologically. Mm -hmm. And so if you would say, you know what, I'm going to bring who I am out there. Mm -hmm. And that's who I'm going to be. And I'm going to be there for the people who resonate with me. I, I often give the example of, There are hormones that circulate in our body, in a woman, estrogen and progesterone, in a man, testosterone. Well, you know what? Not every tissue in the body responds to those hormones. Some do, some don't. So what are you going to say? Estrogen and progesterone are not impactful. Testosterone is not impactful because these tissues don't know what to do with it. They don't know how to respond to it. They don't have receptors for it. Of course not. You look at the tissues that do have the receptors for it, and see the powerful actions they have there. So you look for the people who are going to respond to you, and they're going to be powerfully impacted. So I was taught at one point also, Here's a because I see that you were at the University School of Medicine, right? Yes. And I want to uh, find out a little bit more in that regard. Sure. But I was taught that I had a bad back for a while. I pushed the scenery during a strike period for all in a family, 20 30 years ago, and uh, my back sort of went out, right? That word went out. Uh, later on, someone had told me, uh, actually a doctor, Sarno, whatever, and he told me it was a lack of oxygen. So since you've been talking about DNA, and, uh, and it actually is a very uh, dear subject to me, this kind of thinking mm-hmm. um, about our uh, our body and our you know genetic uh, makeup and things like that, mm-hmm. um, his, uh, his thought was that if you think you're going to hurt yourself lifting up that rock, you deplete your oxygen from that part of your body, and you probably, you know, it becomes weaker, that area in your body. C- counter, to it, or counter to that is if you have some pain somewhere in your body, to think about putting uh, oxygen into that part of your body. Any thought there? Well, I'll have to tell you I'm not an expert on that, but let me tell you what I do know. Okay. And that is in the brain, and by the way, your neurons use more oxygen than any other tissue in your body. Okay. And in your brain, when your neurons are active, they're using more oxygen than when they're not. So if you, if you don't breathe deeply, for example, and pause, many of us, because we're rushing around, we don't take the time to bring to fill our lungs with oxygen and then to release as much oxygen as possible so that we deflate the lung and make it ready for the next deep breath. Every once in a while, it's really important to increase your oxygen intake so that you keep your brain cells active and happy. And you can do that by breathing exercises. And, I mean, look at the number of... Um, spiritual practices across the world regardless of religion 
about how breathing is such an essential part of connecting with yourself. And I think it's that because it connects you with your own life force. And your cells can't utilize what's in the blood if it's not being carried, oxygenated into the tissues. The whole thing, I'm becoming a yoga instructor, the whole thing about yoga is breathing. That's it, right. It's the uh, asanas. It's That's the breath correct. and uh, in and out and taking it. And the deeper you breathe, the... Uh, the and it is the best stress reliever in the world. In fact, I'd ask anybody who's listening to this broadcast to take the time to just relax their breath and allow oxygen to come in at a normal pace. You don't have to <gasps> take all that in that way. Just let it be peaceful and let it be normal and allow yourself some peacefulness in the midst of that breath. And that's how we can counteract stress. I'm going to read here uh, because I, you have a wonderful book and I, I love the thought process of what, what you have here. I'm going to just read so the audience has some sense here. Sure. Okay, who am I? So there we started with that. We, we <laughs> haven't gotten further from the, <laughs> from the who am I <laughs> the part here. However, right, that's why you started, I imagine, part one with it. So, But not good enough here. Here's some of the things that then you can uh, uh, ponder over in... in in, in the book here by Joan. So, uh, awareness, all right, not good enough. Awareness, living, discovery, transition, authenticity, foundation. All right, not good enough. Founda What's a foundation in regard to uh, not good enough? Well, you know, unfortunately, when we're growing up, and I know I used to try to dance, and I'm clumsy. So uh, I'd hear all these critiques about I couldn't dance. So what do you take as a self-concept then? Oh, I'm not good at this. Oh, I'm not good at that. But that's a superficial manifestation of who you are. At the deepest level of who you are, if you are alive, you have access to this deep energy within you mm -hmm. that is wise and ancient, and that's the basis of your greatness. And it's when we connect with that that we bring forth our greatness. When we think about all that we're not, that's when you're thinking about not good enough. Everybody I know that's gotten to some extraordinary place in their lives, either personally or professionally, has had to encounter that problem. I'm laughing. I'm smiling, in fact, because a lot of times when I don't know something, uh -huh. I always say, but I can dance. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I can, it. and I can really dance well. I love it. I'm going to get you on Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> isn't, it, this is, isn't it funny? The, the, I think the joy of it all is this uh, reality of, you know, the ups and downs, the sort of like, what do you think about taking yourself too seriously? Well, what is it we take seriously? We okay. take seriously what other people tell us about ourselves. Like, oh, that was a great job, or... Boy, did you make a blunder. Uh -huh, okay. And your reality is much deeper than that. And when you connect to that deeper reality, that's when you bring forth your light. <laughs> Why me? What's wrong? That's right. Okay. Yeah. The emotional. All right. Anybody emotional out there? All right. So. <laughs> Anybody tell you? Oh, you're just too emotional. <laughs> <laughs> but, but girls are more emotional. No, and then some girl just told me, no, boys are more emotional. <laughs> <laughs> How about that one? There's a funny one about us all, huh? The well, male, we've female. We've got a lot of stereotypes that we can, we can choose to live in a limited box or we can choose to walk out of that box and live more expansive lives. Okay, ask for help, someone said. Oh, no, that's your chapter. That's right. <laughs> what does that mean? How do you well, ask for help? The first thing you do is realize, and, and this is such an important lesson from the body, Cells all connect to each other. The on only cells that aren't connected are red blood cells, and they die in 90 days. The message of the body is you never do it alone. You're always interacting with people, so why not actually make a conscious and purposive and ask for help when you need it? Because that's when our greatness comes up in relationship. I mean, you can think you're the greatest thing in the world, Get in relationship, and you'll find out who you really are. And should you ask for what you want in this Absolutely. process? Absolutely. Literally say, literally. you know, literally not be embarrassed, not right. anything. Say exactly, I would like to have X, Y, and Z. We used to drive from Boston to New Hampshire every Friday night, and we'd 
get me a Portsmouth, and I'd say to my husband, do you want to stop for supper? Now, he wanted to keep driving because we had 45 more minutes to go, and he knew I wanted wine at dinner. And he'd say no, and I'd sulk until I woke up, and he said, why don't you ask me what you really want? Ah. 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 I want to stop for supper. Now, Uh how can we do it in such a way that you can still drive that 45 minutes? So we discovered there was some great, in Portsmouth, some great... um, cafes for espresso and he said well if i just have one glass of wine and then i have espresso i'll be fine that solved the problem so the word uh, do we could do we call this word uh, communication we call it connection because oh, unfortunately better. communication is like a river it can bring junk or it can bring gold i Connect- love that connection now when you connect with someone you usually mean something positive now, your book is a workbook, I will say, yes, in addition is. to just a lot of good thoughts. So it if is. you took the workbook out, it would just be lots of good thoughts. But you've now, because you've included, in, in, in I will say, in, in, in an educator's fashion, you've included space here to write in your book. <laughs> but I'm also a coach, you know? <laughs> no, I understand. No, I think it's very good. I think the directions to the reader. I think, uh, you know, uh, this is your uh, your ability to help somebody an inner work book right it's their ability to help themselves yay all right well, I, i'm, I'm just the stimulus but there they're you go. the explorer and i see our bodies model the teaching you know yeah it's really wonderful uh work and this would be a great you know uh thing for somebody to do with their life is to take a moment and give yourself a break <laughs> and uh, and a pause Absolutely. and consider you know your 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 being yeah touch the greatness of who you are it'll change your life i love it i love it okay well you know i uh, gee I just, we, we this zoomed right by here this okay. conversation and uh, <laughs> and uh, and i'm very uh, happy that we got a chance to uh, start off with a, our first conversation um and uh, look forward to to speaking again last question to you joan at yeah. this point what's good news for you Good news for me is that every day is a new opportunity and that when we have challenges and problems, I think we face them in order to bring out more of who we really are and it could be parts of ourselves we've never experienced before. I love it. Thanks, Joan. You're welcome. Take Bye-bye. Care. Bye.